SOS services has been proven to work for nearly three decades, and this video will help ensure you're following the correct procedure. The ideal time to draw an oil sample is after the machine has been running all day, or you can run the equipment for 20 minutes prior to sampling to ensure the oil is well circulated. Keep in mind that when sampling compartments, like the hydraulic system, that the implements must be exercised before taking the sample. There are two ways to get samples, the sampling valve method and the vacuum extraction method. Let's start with vacuum extraction. Remember, the oil samples should be drawn with a separate vacuum pump and tubing from the coolant samples. The appearance of oil in a coolant sample, or coolant in an oil sample, will cause false alerts to appear on your SOS report. Start by turning off the engine. Measure and cut new tubing equal to the length of the dipstick. If the compartment you are sampling does not have a dipstick, cut the tubing so that it reaches about halfway into the oil depth. Insert the tubing through the head of the vacuum pump and tighten the retaining nut. The tubing should extend about two and a half centimeters or one inch beyond the base of the vacuum pump head. By extending the tube into the bottle about an inch, the oil won't spray on the undersurface of the vacuum pump head and the tubing won't reach past the fill line on the bottle. Install a new, clean sampling bottle onto the vacuum pump. Next, insert the end of the tubing into the oil. Be careful not to let the tubing touch the bottom of the compartment. Hold the bottle vertically and press the vacuum pump handle to create a vacuum. If oil enters the pump, disassemble and clean it before taking the sample. Fill the bottle three quarters full. Take the tubing out of the compartment. Then remove the bottle from the vacuum pump and secure the cap. The outside of the tube and the underside of the vacuum pump head should be free of oil. If the outside of the tube should come in contact with the oil, loosen the retaining nut and extend the tube through the vacuum pump. This enables you to trim off any contaminated tubing. Then the tubing can be retracted. This minimizes the oil contamination that builds up inside the vacuum pump. If you don't do this, it is possible that future samples taken with this vacuum pump may become contaminated. Sampling using the sampling valve is the preferred method. It is faster and more reliable than using the vacuum pump. Let's take a look at sampling valves. The oil samples should be drawn with a new piece of tubing for each compartment. The tubing should be about six inches long and should be cut with a tube cutter. You will also need a brass probe to place on the end of the tubing. Or you can use the prepackaged bottle, lids, and probe and tube assembly. Set the engine at low idle and remove the oil valve dust cap. Insert the probe into the valve and collect about 100 milliliters or 4 fluid ounces of oil into a waste container. If you use the prepackaged bottle method, you can use one of the bottles for waste. This process cleans the valve and helps ensure a representative sample. Please dispose of the tubing and oil in the waste container properly. If the oil flow is slow at low idle, you may need to have someone accelerate the engine to high idle while extracting the sample. Bring out the probe, leaving the bottle and lids in the plastic bag. Insert the probe into the valve and fill the bottle about three quarters full. Remove the probe from the valve and quickly cap the sample bottle. This technique greatly minimizes the dirt suspended in the air or on your hands from getting into the sample. Remember to replace the dust cap on the sampling valve. Please make sure that you fill out the label completely. In order for your dealership to properly consult with you, the hours, miles, or kilometers on the equipment and on the oil must be clearly identified. Remember to send the oil sample to the lab as soon as possible. If the sample is not analyzed within a reasonable amount of time, the equipment maintenance information it may contain may not be as valuable. Consult Datasheet PEHP 6001, How to Take a Good Oil Sample if You Have Additional Questions. The ideal time to draw a coolant sample is after a machine has been run all day. You should wait until the machine cools down. That takes about one to two hours and then start the engine to circulate the coolant. The time may vary depending on the size of your sump and the size of your machine. 
but it should be no more than five minutes if you are using a vacuum pump. If you are using a sampling valve, the time may vary depending on the size of your sump and the size of your machine, but it should be between 15 and 30 minutes or long enough for the thermostat to open up. Insert the tubing through the head of the vacuum pump and tighten the retaining nut. The tubing should extend about two and a half centimeters or one inch beyond the base of the vacuum pump head. Install a new, clean sampling model onto the vacuum pump. Once the engine is shut off, approach the radiator cap cautiously. Do not remove the cap if you feel heat when you put your hand near it. Once the radiator cap is cool enough to touch, slowly loosen the cap to relieve system pressure. Insert the end of the tubing into the coolant. Again, be careful not to let the tubing touch the bottom of the compartment. While holding the bottle vertically, pump the vacuum pump handle. Fill the sample bottle three quarters full. Withdraw the tubing. Remove the bottle from the vacuum pump and cap the bottle. Now let's review the process for taking samples using the coolant valve. As previously stated, using the valve is the best way to obtain a sample. The coolant samples should be drawn with a clean piece of tubing about six inches long and should be cut with a tube cutter. You will also need a brass probe to place on the end of the tubing. Alternatively, you could use the pre-packaged bottle, lids, and probe tube assembly. Carefully remove the coolant valve dust cap. Insert the probe into the valve and collect about 100 milliliters, or 4 fluid ounces, of coolant into a waste container. If you use the pre-packaged bottle method, you can use one of the bottles for waste. This process cleans the valve and helps to ensure a representative sample. Please dispose of the coolant in the waste container properly. Leaving the bottle and lids in the plastic bag, bring only the probe out. Insert the probe into the valve, filling the bottle about three quarters full. Then quickly cap the bottle and replace the dust cap. Please make sure that you fill out the label completely. In order for your coolant to be analyzed properly, the hours, miles, or kilometers on the equipment and on the coolant must be clearly identified. Please remember to send the coolant sample to the lab as soon as possible. If the sample sits for more than a week, some of the additives and contaminants may precipitate or fall out of solution. Remember that a sample should not be drawn from the overflow tank or from any cooling system drain valve. These samples will not be representative of the coolant in the system. The high costs of doing business these days make maintenance more important than ever before. SOS Services can help you keep your equipment running efficiently and productively.